Hey, it's Chris Chico, and if you're doing any sort of marketing for your real estate business, whether that be paid marketing or any sort of free uh, marketing where you're driving for dollars, etc., you have to understand that there's four different types of sellers that you're going to encounter in your real estate business. And knowing how to identify those sellers and also how to communicate and uh, qualify those sellers properly is key so that not only can you make money, but you can avoid wasting time with a bunch of sellers and or perhaps you might be ignoring certain sellers that could be a gold mine for you, but the fact is that you're uh, completely ignoring them, mistreating them, and now you're losing an opportunity to go ahead and make money from them. And I'm doing this video here from the VidCon 10 conference here. I'm here with my wife and my daughters enjoying our time together here in our summer vacation. Uh, I didn't come here for me to learn how to do YouTube, but really for my daughters to get a chance to meet all their favorite creators. This is the uh, outside uh, area that they have with a bunch of food trucks and they hold concerts here at night and it's a nice place to kind of come out, enjoy the sun a little bit before being inside of the rest of the uh, madness that's happening inside. And as always, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, put a comment in here. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if you're enjoying the content so that way I can be motivated to make more for you. I am motivated to make more for you, but it would be nice to hear from you. How about that? So as always, I have my notes here to make sure I don't forget anything. Let's talk about the first type of seller. Uh, and that is the seller that says, oh my gosh, I need to sell right now, immediately. Please come and take my house. I'm willing to sell my property at a discount. And there's almost no negotiation necessary. And in the end, you get a great deal and you think, oh my God, this business is so easy. I'm going to just make so much money. And now, look, every so often, you're gonna get a seller like that. That's a lay down, all right? But it's not gonna to happen too often. And if you're looking just for that type of seller and that's all you're looking for and that's what your radar has in terms of the type of prospect that you're looking for, you're really gonna struggle in this real estate business because you're going to let a lot of leads that are actually viable and can produce you tremendous profits, you're gonna just ignore them. You're gonna think that they're bad leads because not everybody is yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs and saying, oh my God, please come take my property. And that's the mistake that I see with most real estate investors make. I see that all the time with Facebook ads. They're running Facebook ads and they say, Chico, none of these sellers are motivated. Well, the first question I ask is, what's a motivated seller? And you know, the, the fact is, is that uh, do, People confuse a motivated seller with a reasonable seller versus a desperate seller. Most people are looking for desperate sellers. They're looking for a seller that just has to let their property go. I don't encounter too many of those. I encounter reasonable sellers. Sellers that are reasonable in the sense that they understand that their property needs a lot of work. That they understand that in order for them to be able to sell their property quickly and not have to wait the months required to list it with an agent and to make the repairs, they understand that they're gonna to have to give up some money in the process. And they're trading their equity. They're not giving their equity away. They're tra trading their equity for something else. And that's a reasonable seller. That's what I encounter. And that's where my best students are having success with, not a desperate and not a yelling at the top of the lungs, please take my property type of seller. So that is the first type of seller that you're going to encounter. However, I would just caution you against always looking for that particular type of seller and judging your campaigns as to whether or not they're successful or not if that's the, if you don't get any of those sellers. So very, very, very important distinction here. All right, so let's talk about the second type of seller and that is a curious seller. Curious seller says, I don't know, you called me. Why don't you tell me what you want to offer? Hey, I'm just curious. You know, just thinking about, I haven't been really thinking about it, but you sent me the postcard and so I want to know. You got to be careful because you could spend a lot, a lot of time speaking with these particular sellers and not really get anywhere. And so how do you distinguish these sellers from the rest of the sellers? I'm going to give you one tip, a real nice, simple question to ask is just to ask them, how long have you been thinking about selling? If they say, absolutely have not been thinking about it, but since you sent me this card, since you called me, et cetera, then uh, I decided, hey, maybe uh, see what you got to offer. Typically when they say that to me, it means that they're just, they're tire kickers and nothing's really gonna happen in, in that particular deal. And so then, now the other thing that I would do with that particular type of seller is very quickly make them an offer. You know, make them an offer of 50%, 60% of Zillow, 
just real quick, just to feel them out and see what they say. Many times you'll ask them, well, what were you thinking about selling? They'll say, well, I don't know. I have no idea, but they do know. They just don't want to tell you. And the minute you make them a low ball offer, they're like, oh no, no, I wouldn't sell that property for that much money, for that little bit of money. And then what do you say to them? You just say, well, gee, how much were you thinking? that if you were to sell it, how much? And then they would say, well, gee, um, I had a property, I know a property down the street, sold for X and, uh, and, and mine's is better. And then all of a sudden now they mention a the retail price and now you know, okay, yeah, we're not for you. And I would just preface it by, I would just tell them that, hey, look, we're looking to buy properties that need some work. And so instead of you going out and fixing up the property, then uh, we'll go ahead and make the repairs. We'll do everything. And then in return, you know, we'll, we'll buy it from you and uh, you give us a little bit of a discount. Uh, and most of the time, these curious sellers uh, are really going to be a waste of time for you. So let's talk about the third type of seller that you're going to encounter. And that is a seller that is actively shopping for offers. And uh, you know, this is an interesting seller because this seller may not necessarily pick someone at the end that gives them the highest price. This is where somebody is actively looking for offers. They've spoken with other real estate investors. They're close, they're shopping their, their house around. And uh, this, is where, this is where your sales skills and ability are gonna make the difference between you getting the deal and not getting the deal with this type of prospect. So you've got to have your sales game on and you've got to be able to build rapport. You've got to be able to uh, let them know and be satisfied knowing that yes, you are the right person for the job that you can get the deal done. And you do have to be close on price because even if you could be all those things to that seller, be an amazing uh, resource for them and they feel like, man, you know, this guy really knows what he's doing. I think they can get the job done. But if your price is way off from what other people are offering, then you may not get the deal. And, uh, and so, you know, the, the, again, that's the seller that is actively shopping for an investor. They know they want to go the investor route and now you are looking to differentiate yourself with your ability to build rapport and sell them on the fact that they need to go with you versus somebody else. Now the last but the most important seller that you're going to encounter is the one that tells you, well, I've been thinking about it, but just trying to figure stuff out. That, my friends, is gold because they're just in the beginning part of it. And it, they're gold for a couple of different reasons. Number one, most real estate investors will are not great at follow-up. This is where follow-up becomes key. This is where the follow-up on these on any and anything you do as a real estate investor is always key, but specifically with these leads, because most real estate investors are not going to follow up with these prospects. They are going to maybe attempt to follow up or maybe try to remember, but they don't have a system in place for them to be able to do that. And in the end. They're going to end up calling them and the seller is going to say, oh, I did sell to my, so I sold my property. I signed with another real estate investor a couple of weeks ago. And so the, the, again, the, the, the seller that says, I've been thinking about it now is in that process of acquiring information. And so your job, your job is to build rapport. Your, your job is to find what is the issue that they're trying to solve and see how you can best solve it. Uh, and, and as an example, let's say that you have a seller that has says, you know, I've been thinking about it. My mom passed away a little bit ago and we have the house and my brother lives in there, but we've just been trying to work things out. And, you know, it could be just you asking them, well, what do you want to do? What's your ideal outcome? And sometimes you might offer and say, let me ask you a question. If you sold the house, would your brother be able to move out right away? And they might say, well, no, because he really needs the money, etc." in order to move out then we're going to get the money from the house and we're just trying to figure all that out and so you could say to them well you know have you what if if somebody could buy the house what if you could buy the house and then allow your brother to stay there after the closing such that then now he gets his money you don't have to take money out of your pocket to facilitate this and then we'll give him the time in, in, in the, that, it, that he needs in order to uh, you know, get out without having to pay any rent for the let's like, say 30 days or 45 days would that work for you and all of a sudden now you start to uh, understand their situation, offer solutions to their situation, and put yourself in a position where now uh, over a period of a couple months you follow up with them and lo and behold, now they're ready to do something and guess who they're gonna go with? They're gonna go with you because you're the one that has, uh, that has uh, that have, uh, have been communicating with them all this time and they trust you and uh, they're gonna do business with you. And that, my friends, is the one that is the gold mine 
You know, because what happens is that as you do marketing, the more marketing you do, you're going to do deals that are just going to pop right away from your marketing. Like first, first, you know, you're going to send a batch of direct mail or, uh, or say Facebook ads, and you're going to get some deals right away. However, the way you get to doing multiple, multiple deals per month is the accumulation of the people that you follow up with that then turn into deals over the long term. And uh, it, it isn't sexy. It is hard work, it's uh, being meticulous, uh, tracking everything in your CRM, you know, following up with people, having the discipline. None of that stuff is sexy. None of it is, but it is the stuff that makes the money and it's the stuff that you know, could, literally, could help you go from doing a deal every so often to consistently doing two to three deals a month. And that's my recommendation. Get your first couple of deals on your belt. By that point, if you get three deals on your belt, you'll know exactly how to do real estate deals. You know exactly the process required. And then now you're going to attempt to do two to three deals a month consistently. And one of the best ways to do that without having an, a, 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 a tremendous budget is to uh, follow up consistently and meticulously with your leads and also identify the leads so that you can categorize them properly. You're not wasting your time going after leads that you really shouldn't have in your CRM. And basically, I mean, I say this, if I were to ask you how many hot leads you have in your, you know, right now that you're following up with, and a hot lead is anyone that could, uh, uh, could, that could turn into a deal over the next day, 30 days, and you said, well, I have 50 of them, I tell you, no, no, you have 50, you have, uh, you have 10, you, you really have 10, lead, 10 leads that are hot, 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 and you have another 40 that you have in there that are just clouding everything and now are going to be the cause of you not paying attention to those 10 hot leads that really you should be going after and you should be having top of mind because you know that those are the hottest prospects. And that is my message for today. I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great time here with my family. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make me a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if you think I missed a type of seller. And, uh, and look forward to us working together soon. Make sure you click, you uh, check out the links in the description.